what we're going to be making today is we're going to be creating a recipe page, which is what I have on the screen right here so you can see the finished product of what I actually made. Couple things before we start. This, you could just draw, you do not have to do this with the paper cut method that I am going to show you. You can 100% just draw and colour in. But what I am going to be showing you in this particular video is I'm going to be showing you how to use patterned paper and also show you how to create your own textured paper to make your ingredients that we see on the page here. The idea for this particular craft is pretty simple. What we're going to do is we are essentially going to make an ingredients page for a recipe, for a lunch or a dinner or whatever you have in mind. I've chosen here to show you all the ingredients that I put on a chicken burger that I like making, but you could do absolutely anything you want. You could do baking a cake and do all the ingredients for that. You could do nachos, you could do macaroni cheese, you could do fish fingers and chips. All of these things are absolutely brilliant. Anything at all you want, no wrong answer. But this is the example that I'm showing you what to do. I am going to show you how to do some textured papers. So for things like you can see the lettuce there and the onion. So I'm going to show you how to do those particular textures. However, if the textures that I'm showing you aren't maybe something that you have, I have linked a couple of videos in the description box below that has links to a couple of videos which I thought were brilliant in showing you how to make textured papers using relatively simple materials you probably have lying in the house. There's one that's just purely about coffee and it shows you just what you can do with it. And then the other one is kind of other general ones. So how to make things with like scraps of cardboard boxes, if you have paint, things like that. This bit of craft is actually fairly quick to do once you get started and you've got all your templates made. So let me show you how we're going to get started. So what I'm starting to do here is I off to the side have a list of the ingredients that I normally put in my chicken burger. So I would recommend you do that whether you've got a bolognese recipe or something in front of you. Maybe have a chat with whoever does a lot of cooking in your house and be like, oh, this is my favourite meal. What are the things you put in it? And so you've got a little list in front of you. So for me, I'm starting off with the burger bun here, which is always a good time to start with. So, and I am only going for a very basic shape, only rough shapes for all of the drawings for this particular project. We're not looking for overly realistic pictures, but a general shape that gives you the feel of what you're doing. The main focus of this is going to be the different textures that you're going to make, which will give the idea of what your actual ingredient is. So I'm just doing this on an A4 piece of paper and I'm just doing this in pencil. I'm not worrying about the lines being perfect because this will end up being a template, so this will not show up on your final picture. What I do recommend is if you are looking actually at the ingredient list, it's really useful to have some references in front of you. So for example, you might have some of these things in your fridge or in the cupboard. Like I have a jar of mayonnaise that I took out of the cupboard and used as a reference picture. I had some tomatoes which I whipped out and had a little look at. Or you can look up pictures on your phone. So these are all very useful to give you a general idea of the shape. I remember we looked at shape last week when looking at the cat drawings where I showed you in a lot more detail how to break up uh, a picture to give you shapes to give it a more structured appearance. Something else I am making sure that I'm doing is I'm drawing all of the ingredients that I have on one piece of paper so that I know when I go to put this all together at the end all these ingredients are going to fit on one piece of paper. Now, if you have an awful lot of ingredients, you might want to split this onto two pieces of paper and you can always sellotape those two bits together to make an even bigger piece. So here I am drawing a slice of bacon and again, it's not overly complicated, not going for very realistic, just a very simple shape. So here I'm just drawing just a really simple and that little hole is the little pit where you've taken the seed out if you're curious about that. And here I'm just drawing a little pickled gherkin because I am one of these people who loves a little pickled gherkin on their burger. So again, just a really simple shape, uh, but I'm just putting some little bumps to remind myself that actually this is not a completely smooth. 
And then after that, I think, yep. Yeah, so I'm also just drawing a little slice, giving myself that option, but I don't end up using that particular one. But that is another way that you could draw a gherkin. And also that would work really well, that particular shape for a cucumber, which is always a good time. For my next vegetable I'm going to draw, I am going to draw a onion. So all I'm doing with that is starting with a very large circular shape and at the very top there I'm tapering off into sort of the beginnings of a triangle. Instead of it coming into one point at the top, I've made it go into three so it looks like skin and then those extra triangles I've added on are meant to be like a little root, sorry, uh, maybe a shoot coming out of it and those little hairy lines I've done at the bottom are supposed to be the root lines. Just darkening up some of those lines so I'm happy with them. Although I've put in those hairy lines, I actually don't put them in at the very end. I didn't think I really needed them. This next one is a tomato. So I think this is probably the simplest one I've drawn. It is just a rough circular shape. And then I've added on a sort of star using just some triangles to make the little leaves on the top. I also used to go back to the onion and see how I felt about little slices of onion, like it's been cut up already. So I've done ones in the pure circle and then ones that are in the half. And I only end up using the full root vegetable. Just drawing in some chips because, of course, you can't have a burger without some chips. So just really simple rectangular shapes. And, of course, some cheese. Now, I've done this cheese here like a block of cheese. You know, your classic cartoon cheese. But I end up just using a really simple square once I actually start making it. This one here is the jar of mayonnaise. So starting with a rectangle and then I've curved off the top and the bottom just to make it look a little bit more rounded. And then I'm just adding on the lid. And then I'll also add on a little label on it saying mayonnaise. So again, keeping really simple shapes does not have to get complicated. I also thought about trying to draw a spoon, but I ended up again choosing not to put this in. This down here ended up being one of my favourite ones that I made. It's a little template that I've made for a salt and a pepper shaker. There was no need to draw it twice because I wanted a matching set of salt and pepper. So sort of vaguely triangular shape with a little cap on the top. This I thought about a little cocktail stick but I ended up really not liking it. So I've just left that alone there now. Also drawing in some lettuce leaves. So this was more of a kind of crinkly, organic shape. So it's not really a particular set. It's like a square, but it's also not. It's kind of like the end of a hockey stick. As you know, uh, if you've ever looked at a lettuce leaf, a lettuce leaf is very, very crinkly. And there we have it all of my vegetables laid out. So this is all of the ingredients that I am considering using, I don't use all of them, for my recipe page. So you can see them all laid out there and I've labelled them all. Now we have our list of ingredients. What we now need is we need those papers that I was talking about. So I had a good hunt through my stash of various papers and I looked at wrapping paper, 
scrapbook paper, anything that I had lying around, old packaging, and I was looking for patterns and textures. So I've done a lot of colour, so you can see a lot of the greens I could consider for the lettuce, that pinky colour right in front I could use for bacon. Those paper doilies that I had, could I'm going to actually use for the lettuce. So when you are looking for any papers that you may have in your house, look out for things like that. Things that have to do with colours of what you might want to use. Anything that you can't find that isn't really what you want for what your things, that is where we're going to make our textured papers. So what I would have is just have some plain paper. And if you've had a little look at some of the videos already, have a little look at them. But I'm going to show you, like I said, how to make a couple of them going forward. So I'm going to show you how to make the bun texture using coffee and crayons and things to help you make that. So pause this video here and it's time to hunt and gather. So my first textured paper I'm going to show you how to do is using coffee and I'm going to use this for the burger bun. So all I'm doing is I'm taking a bit of paper that's a little bit bigger than my burger bun which I've cut out of my template and I've mixed up just some instant coffee in a cup. Just use warm water or cold water, you do not need to boil the kettle for this. And using a teaspoon I'm dripping it on the paper and spreading it around. You'll see the paper is crinkling up there, which is absolutely fine. I'm then taking some salt and I'm putting that all over my paper. And what happens is the coffee pulls round all of those bits of paper and creates little darker stains where those pieces are. And now I've done that, I'm going to pop that over to the side to let it dry. So next up I'm going to make the lettuce. Now I got lucky and found this paper lace doily in, randomly in my cupboard and I really liked the texture and the shapes going round the border. I thought it would just be perfect for lettuce. So all I'm doing is I'm kind of ripping this circle in half and then I'm ripping that up more into smaller chunks and I'm crinkling them up to kind of give them that more organic lettuce look and then I'm going to unroll them and flatten them out. And now I have various pieces that I can use to make my lettuce. I'm now taking some crayons and I've got two shades of green. I've got a light and a dark green. I've got a yellow and I've got a white. And what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to make a gradient. So going from darker green to the white towards the bottom of the leaf. So I'm starting with the dark green at the very top where that, all those little cutouts and little bits of texture are. And then on my little kind of next section going down, I'm going with the lighter green. I'll then go in with the yellow and then the white at the very bottom. I'm doing this on both sides of the paper so that both sides are fully coated. And I will do that for every single leaf that I have. And there we have it, all three finished lettuce leaves. Now I'm going to move on to the tomato. So again, I'm using the templates that I made from my sheet and I'm just cutting round the circle. And I found this nice red dotted paper and I'm just flipping that over so you'll not see any of my pencil marks on the front. And using that to draw on the back so I can cut out my little tomato shape. Now, as we know, tomatoes do not have polka dots, but again, it doesn't matter. It's more the colour that I was interested in for this. And I found this other little green scrap of paper in this nice tartan look. 
to make little triangles that will become the leaves for the tomato. Again, you can use plain paper. You do not have to use the pattern paper, but if you do, you can just add a nice little something. And all I need to do now is glue on those tomato leaves. Now moving on to my bacon and I've chosen two different types of paper here for this. I liked this pink, very sort of dusty pink colour for the meat of the bacon, the red of the bacon. And I found this nice creamy letter paper that I thought would be good for the fat. My bacon is meant to look uncooked, it's meant to look like a fresh ingredient so this will work. So I'm drawing with the main shape on, the full shape sorry, on the parchment type of paper and I'm cutting around that entire shape, no details added, just the shape of the template. And then on the template, I'm cutting off that big strip at the top that would be sort of that big main piece of fat that you'd have. And I'm again flipping over my paper and I'm gonna draw around the rest of that template. This will be slightly smaller so that when I glue it on top, it will show that little bit of creamy paper that'll look like the bacon fat. As it is right now, it would actually look perfect as a fish fillet or a salmon fillet. And I'm just adding in a couple of extra little cutouts, looking at my pictures of bacon where you see some other little streaks of fat poking through. Looking back on this, I think this definitely looks a little bit more like a fish fillet, like a salmon fillet, rather than bacon, but I think it still works really, really well. And I'm just gluing those two pieces together. For the onion, I am taking crayons again. I've taken various shades of pink and purple, and I've just scribbled them all on top of each other on some paper that I had. This will give it the onion skin kind of look. And then just as before, I'm cutting out my onion template. I will then flip that piece of paper over, draw around the onion and cut it out. I'm paying attention, to, however, to the direction that I've put the lines in. I want the lines to go up and down the onion, because if you look at onion, that is generally how the lines go. And I'm going to again cut out some little green pieces for those little shoots at the top just so it's not fully purple. And that will be my onion done, gluing them on the back there. Next is my little pickle gherkin. So I'm going to use that same green dotty paper. And using my crayons again, and again I've taken a variety of greens and also a little bit of yellow and white. I'm doing little circular colour, bits of colour on there, so little scribbly patterns. And that will help give the illusion that I have the texture of kind of little nubs all over the gherkin. So it doesn't look entirely smooth. Once I've done that, once again I'll cut out my gherkin template. Put draw on the back of the paper and cut it out.
and as I cut I'm moving my scissors around it so that I get little bumps in the paper so again it's not entirely smooth so I'm just moving my paper round to create a little scalloped edge and there it is all done Next up I was making some chips and all I did was over some white paper I scribbled over some yellow crayon and then cut out rectangles. Next I am working on the actual breaded chicken that will go inside my burger and what I have here is I have a dark brown, I have a yellow, quite a dark yellow and a cream. To make your yellow darker all you have to do is really add in like if you've got a little bit of brown paint that will darken it up a little bit. And the creamy colour, you can add in again a little touch of yellow into your white, or you can add in a very teeny tiny amount of black into your white to get those colours. I'm then using a sponge tool, but you can use an old dish sponge or a fresh dish sponge if you have it, or an old tissue that's scrumpled up, just anything that can create a dabbing motion. And all I'm doing is I'm just taking those three separate colours, dipping that in, putting it around the page and that kind of gives it that kind of breaded effect. Next I am moving on to my little salt and pepper shakers. So I'm cutting out the full template and I'm going to draw around that shape on some white paper and then I'll cut that out. I've done that twice for salt and pepper and working on the pepper first I found this brown dotted paper which would be absolutely fantastic for making uh, the pepper grains and all I'm doing is I've drawn my template on that same paper that I had before and I'm drawing the shape inside it that will be where the pepper sits. I've drawn it slightly inside that original shape so there'll be a little white border when I stick it on. And because I did my little, my little shaker with angles, I've cut it into small bits so that when I line it up here, I can space them out slightly from each other so that there's a little gap in between the brown paper so it'll look like the shaker is actually angled. I also decided to kind of rip the tops to make it look more like a flowing shape. This is one way of doing it. Now, of course, I've used this brown spotty paper here, but you could use that same coffee paper technique that we used for the burger bun. Or you could use some good old parchment paper or whatever you've got lying around. Even just colour the shape in with some brown pencil or some crayon and that will work absolutely fine. And I'm going to do the same thing for the salt, except instead of the brown dotted paper, I've used this slightly cream paper instead, but it will be the same technique.
And for the tops of the salt and pepper, I went with this blue patterned paper for the salt and a red top for the pepper. And now I've stuck those on, I can just cut round the template on the back so it'll fit perfectly. Next up is the mayonnaise, and I'm going to use a very similar technique to what I used for the salt and pepper shakers. I'm going to cut out the template, draw around that full template on the white, on the white card, and then I will use some couple of extra details to make the label for the mayonnaise the top as well, and the mayonnaise inside it. So it's the exact same technique as I used for the salt and pepper. I'm just gonna add a label on the very top Again, I'm drawing around this paper so it'll look like the actual mayonnaise is sitting inside the jar. So drawing a little bit inside the template so it'll have a little border and then a wavy line at the top for that mayonnaise. I cut around that there and glue it onto the paper. So as you see when I put that on there, there's a little white border that will look like the actual glass of the jar. So it'll look like the mayonnaise is actually sitting in it. Again, I'm going to use that same blue patterned paper for the lid. So again, just cutting out a shape that's a little bit bigger and gluing it right on top there. And then I will trim round the template on the back. I had in the label for the mayonnaise and I'll write mayonnaise on this as well so it'll be clearly linked. And just putting on my mayonnaise title, which I'll put on in blue pen. This here is just the olive, so I've just found some dark purple paper, drawn a simple oval shape and cutting it out. I'm also going to put in a little white highlight so it looks like the olive is quite shiny. Just using my white crayon there. So now my chicken fillet uh, paper is all dry. So now I can cut out the template that I made for the little chicken burger. I'm gonna cut that out and draw on the back. And just as before, cut it out. And my coffee paper is now also dry. So you can see it's gone much lighter than when we put it on. And the salts, you can see where all the darker places are. So all I'm doing is rubbing off that extra salt that's on the paper, just onto some scrap paper so that I can take it over to the bin. I can see it's all done. This paper would also be great for doing something like a baked potato or pancakes, there's really a lot of uses you can use. One textured paper does not just mean it's for one particular ingredient of a particular food. So I'm just cutting it around the two pieces of the burger bun. And again, just as I've done before, I'm gonna trace those onto the paper and cut them out.
There's the brokered bun on the top of it, and then the awesome section. I will also add on just a little bit of extra shading on top of this, just to make it look a little bit more convincing because it is looking quite potato-like at the moment. So I will take this dark yellow colour just to kind of shade in a little bit at the top so it looks a little bit more 3D. Again, not looking for it to be perfect, but just a little bit more of a hint of what it is there. And I'll put a little bit of darker just at the top of the burger bun there so it looks like it's been a little bit more cooked. And to me, that looks a good bit better. So there's all my pieces. Now, I don't worry, I do realise that I don't have the tomato on the page, but you won't see it until the very end. As you can see, it's tucked right off screen there, and I entirely forget about it. What I'm doing now is I'm bringing over my presentation piece of paper, if you will. And all I'm doing is I am arranging all of the ingredients to fit on the page. So imagine you're opening up a recipe book and you're looking to find all the cooking parts. You have the ingredients part and you have the method part. This would be the ingredients page, not the method page where it tells you actually how to cook it all. So all I'm doing is I'm arranging everything on the paper so that I am happy with it. And I try this in lots and lots of different ways in different positions. I'm not gonna show you every single one because we'll be here for a little while. But that's what's really nice about these particular ones. Because everything is cut out, you can physically rearrange it on the page, which is always nice. On this particular page, I am trying to leave a gap at the top so that I can put an actual title saying chicken burger or whatever you want to call it. And again, rearranging it just until I'm happy, but bearing in mind that I want to put the title on it. So even just changing the angle or direction can make a difference. So don't just slap it on paper and be like, ah, that'll do, be fine. Really think about what you're putting on there. And yes, I have still forgotten that tomato. Don't worry, you will see it in the final paper. Now, when I was actually looking at this, I didn't really like the fully just white piece of paper. I wanted to add a little something onto the background. So I took some baking paper and I've ripped a piece so it's a little bit bigger than my actual page and I've scrunched it all up to give it a paper. My idea was that maybe if you were at a takeaway or the butchers and you get your, obviously your food wrapped up in the actual paper, this might be quite nice to add just that, keep that texture going. So I've laid that piece of paper on top of my white piece of paper and I've then just started to rip sections off so it's not just all brown. So I've ripped it off so you can see the white corners and then I've also ripped some extra little sections. Once I'm kind of happy with that, I'm adding just a little bit of glue just to help me get an initial hold of the paper there. And I'm not laying it down entirely flat. I am purposefully folding the paper up so that I've got some darker sections as you see that that's just where the paper has folded over. And I'm just starting to glue bits and pieces down where I feel happy with it. Adding in extra folds where I want them to. I am trying to get this paper, even though I've crinkled it up and folding it, as flat as I can because that will make sticking the ingredients down much, much easier. So I keep going over, checking where any bits are sticking up, or where I've got a fold, making sure underneath that fold is glued down to make it a little easier. So I'm really giving it a good press and I've even brought over a box that's got some heavy bits and pieces in it just to press that on there. Now for the extra brown bits on the side, I could cut them off or you can do what I'm doing here and just fold it over because this paper is super duper thin and just fold it over the paper nice and neatly. Any 
any places that get quite thick with the paper, I do chop that little bit off just to make it a little easier for myself. And there we have it, my background is all done there. And now it's time to glue on the ingredients. Now I did take a photograph of where my ingredients were laying on the paper, which is always a good idea. And also I was filming this, so I actually had a record of where I'd put these pieces. But I again changed my mind as I was laying these on the paper, which again is what happens sometimes, and that's fine. When I'm arranging these, I'm thinking about where the different papers are going. So for example, I didn't want dotty tape, like patterned pieces of paper right next to each other. I wanted to break those up a little bit so that I was distributing all my different textures and colours nice and evenly. Like for example, I didn't want the chicken burger, the cheese and the bun all together in one place because that was in quite a lot of brown all together. Same, I didn't want the any too much green together. I did want the salt and paper shit the salt and paper shaker together. Salt and pepper. Oh goodness, I've forgotten how to talk now. It's been a it's been a long recording day. And all I'm doing is once I'm happy with that, I will glue it down. And yes, I still have not spotted that tomato on the side. Don't worry, it will be in the final picture. Uh, because I really was missing that bit of red when I had finished this. And again, I know it's slightly off camera, but all I'm doing is gluing those pieces down. So hopefully you can you can see all of those. Because the paper is crinkled, you will need to give it a really good press and make sure you've got plenty of glue on your paper. And like I've done before, in that white corner, I've left that piece entirely blank so that I can put in my title. I really liked these lettuce leaves that turned out I think they look really good. My slice of cheese that was just cut from a square piece of paper. This lettuce was pretty fiddly to glue down though. It was quite a shiny paper, which uh, glue doesn't often, well, print stick anyway, doesn't often like sticking down. Definitely think my favorite pieces were the salt and pepper shaker. I think they worked out really, really well. The bacon is probably the thing I'm most unhappy with. I do think it looks a little bit more like a fish than it does a piece of bacon, but art is generally all about looking back at what you've done and seeing what you would change later on and how you would improve. And that would definitely be something. I think it makes a great looking fish fillet. If it was an orangey color, it would 100% look like a salmon fillet, I think. Uh, so always just really, really handy. And I think that that's purely because of the zigzag pattern that's going across it. I think it is quite convincing at making it look like um, uh, the actual texture of the fish under the skin. And there we have all my pieces glued down, minus that tomato. And yes, it is infuriating me as I am watching this that I have not glued down that tomato, uh, but you will see it in the final one. In the corner, I'm just writing down the title of my recipe, which I'm just making simply, the chicken burger. I wanted to think of a pun but I couldn't think of one. Uh, so if anyone has any great ideas of a burger recipe pun, then feel free to chuck in a suggestion to your teachers of how you would, what you would call this. So anyone who's ever done letting with me knows that one of the tips that I like to do is just to write out the words just normally, just maybe slightly larger and maybe sometimes in capital letters, whatever you're wanting and then use that as an inside skeleton, if you will, and go round the outside of the letters like a little picture frame, and that will give you a kind of bubble type letter. And then I'm just taking 
a black, very, very thin pen. I'm just going to go around those letters and then I'll fill them in slightly with that pen using some diagonal lines just to give it a little bit of fill but not be entirely flat. And after that, my recipe page is done. And when I have got that completed here, you will see on the end screen again, the finished product with the tomato stuck on it. Cause yes, I can see it at the side there. It is infuriating me as I am actually narrating this particular project. What I love about this particular project is if as a class you all end up doing a different recipe, then as a class you have made an entire recipe book, which is pretty awesome and can look beautiful and amazing up on walls. These particular pictures as well can also look fantastic in frames. Uh, they can look great on the wall, in the kitchen, and also just be a really nice memory of maybe when you learned how to cook something for the first time, or whether it was baking a cake, or whatever you like. Here is my finished picture here. I'm really pleased with it. Again, the lettuce is probably my favourite piece that I made. And least favourite, probably the bacon. I think I, if it had just been a plain piece of uh, pink paper, I think that would have worked a lot better for that one. But I had a lot of fun making this and I hope you have fun making it too. Again, can't wait to see what it is you make. Have a lovely rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed the snow if you had snow this week. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.